welcome to the first video in our webcast series on the topic of axonometric projection. So in this video we're going to look at how to create a three-dimensional image of an object where the image is seen scaled down um, in accordance with how we would see the object when we're looking directly at it. So let's have a quick look at the background of our object and see what an axonometric view is. So here is our 3D setup of an object, so in this case a series of steps, and here we have our typical planes of reference. We have a vertical plane, a horizontal plane, and our end vertical plane. Now typically we use these planes to get us our plan elevation and end view by projecting our front elevation onto our vertical plane, giving us our front elevation, by projecting our plan view onto our horizontal plane, giving us our, well, our plan view here, and projecting our side view onto our end vertical plane, giving us our end elevation here like so. So if we want to create a three-dimensional view of an object, well, what we need to do is we need to look at the object so that we're seeing it in three dimensions. So we see the length, breadth, and height of the object. And we do this by looking at it from a different direction other than front, side, and top. So here we can see we're looking at the object slightly from above and looking in at the corner of our object so that all the faces of our object are visible. And this makes the object slightly easier to read because, well, this is how we're used to seeing the world. So it's easier to make a representation of the object that anyone can understand whether they've done graphics or not. So if we think about our orthographic where we have a viewing direction looking in from the front, we have our object, and we have a plane of reference that we're projecting onto, well those rules still hold true with our axonometric projection. We need a plane to project our image onto. So in this case here, it's a triangular plane tucked into the corner of our room, and this is known as the axonometric projection, or the axonometric plane. And the important thing about this plane is that we're looking directly in at it. We're looking straight in at this plane, so this plane here is seen as a true shape. And if we change our viewing direction, we're going to have a new plane. But again, we're looking directly in at it, and we're always seeing it as a true shape. And the basic idea of our axonometric projection is that if we take our object of that, when we're looking in directly at our plane like so, well, what we're doing is we're tracing an image of the object onto our axonometric plane. So in the same way that we have front elevation, our end view, and our plan view are all projected onto a relevant plane. So our axonometric plane here gives us our 3D image of the object. So let's have a look at how we go about getting this three-dimensional view. So we're going to solve it over here in 3D, and side by side then we're going to solve it in two dimensions as well. So we'll begin by first of all drawing in the corners of the room. So this is a corner where our back wall and our side wall meet. So this is going to be a vertical line drawn here like so. And here we have where our back wall and our ground line meet like so. Now depending on the view or the viewing direction of the object, these angles will change. But for the moment we're going to take them at the most basic, which is known as an isometric view, which means that all these angles here are going to be equal at 120 degrees. Um, or another way to put that would be that this is a vertical line like so, and these two lines here are at 30 degrees. So it works quite well with the likes of our set squares. So to make our object fit in the page, the length of these lines doesn't matter, but I like to usually keep it something around maybe 70 or 80 millimeters long so that it doesn't get too big and run off the page. So I usually say put a compass here and swing an arc 70 or 80 millimeters long to give me the ends of my tripod or the corners of my room. The next thing we do is draw in our triangular plane like so. So we simply do that by drawing a horizontal line and then two 60 degree lines here or just joining the ends of my um, my tripod here like so. And this is basically a two dimensional version of the corners of our room. So you can see there's our back wall, our side wall and our ground. There's our back wall, our side wall and our ground as we will be looking straight in at our axonometric plane. So what we want to do then is we need to work with what we have or what information we have to construct this three-dimensional version. And the information that we start off with is that we know the size of our plan elevation and end view. And we know that our front elevation is projected onto this vertical plane, our plan is on the horizontal plane, and our side view on our end vertical plane, like so. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these views and we're going to see it as true. So we're at the moment, this plan view here, because the angle here is at 120 degrees, we're not seeing this as the true shape of our plan view. So we don't know what size this is at the moment. So in order to scale for our 3D view, what we need to do is we need to hinge this so we're looking at it as a true shape. And this is easy because we know that the real angle of the corner of a room here is actually 90 degrees. So what we're going to do is hinge up that image like so, and we're going to um, give us our 
true shape of our plan view, albeit slightly rotated. So this is actually a 45 degree lines in our isometric view. So this means our plan view is just inclined at 45 degrees. Now our plan view at the moment is kind of in the wrong place. It's on top of where we want our 3D view. So we don't want to be drawing lines on top of lines. So what I'm going to do is, for convenience sake, I'm just going to pull it out of the way here. Um, so straight down, in line with my vertical line here, just out of the way so it's not going to be drawn on top of my um, my isometric view. So another thing then, just a little background theory, we know the angle here needs to be 90 degrees. So when it comes to drawing it on our page, what we're going to do is we're going to borrow from a previous principle. Um, the idea here is if we have a circle and we have a diameter line like so, well we know that if we have a triangle where the extra point on our triangle is on the circumference of our uh, circle, the angle here has to be 90 degrees. So it doesn't matter what angle that guy is, that triangle, the angle is always 90 degrees like so. So we're going to borrow this principle here uh, to set up our um, plan view on our page. So we do that by simply just drawing our lines down here like so, vertical lines. So this is going to be just representing this image here just pulled out of the way. So the, the length of it doesn't matter, just so long as you're not running off the page. Uh, we're going to draw a horizontal line like so, and we're going to then draw in our line. Now, for the likes of our orthographic, you can, or isometric, you can draw two 45 degree lines, but we're going to set it up in a way that can be used in all examples. So, we're going to bisect the line like so, so using our bisection line method, and finding the center there, we're going to draw in a semicircle, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to locate this corner of my room by simply just continuing the corner of the room here down until it finds there. So here we have our point, like so, and that locates as the corner of the room. And because it's on the circumference of this semicircle, we know the angle here is 90 degrees. So that is the true shape of our object. And we can just draw in our plan view of our object using our dimensions given. So basically we're going to do the same thing then um, for our front elevation. We're going to hinge him up like so, and like before, we're going to just move him out of the way um, so he's not drawn on top of our isometric view. So we're going to do exactly the same thing over here. We're going to come off here at 90 degrees to our edge like so, or in line with the corner of our room here between the ground and the side wall. So the either perpendicular to one or parallel to the other. Um, in our case here, this is a 30 degree line. So in our isometric, this makes it a little bit easier. We come off whatever distance you want, as long as it's not too far out. And we're going to just draw in our parallel line, parallel to our edge like so. And like before, we're going to bisect um, the line. So bisecting the line, we're going to draw in our semicircle, and like we did before, we're going to extend on the corner of our room like so, to locate the corner of our room like so. So this here represents the ground, this here represents the side wall, and this is us looking straight in at our front wall, so like so. So we're going to draw in our front elevation using our dimensions, and so this is our ground line, so all our lines that are horizontal are parallel with that. This is our vertical line, so all lines that are vertical are going to be parallel with that. And at the moment we actually have enough to draw in our 3D view, but I'm just going to go and um, repeat the process for the end view here. We don't actually need to. Two views are enough to give us the length, breadth and height, but just by way of demonstration. Same approach, same method. Um, it doesn't matter which views you take, as long as you take two views, but generally speaking, what we do is we try to take the two views that give the best idea of the object. So the front elevation, the plan view, seem to work out the best here. So there's our end view of our object. And you can see they all line up. If I look in this direction here, well, this is what I'll see. If I look in from this direction here, this is what I'll see. If I look from above here, well, this is what I'm going to see here, my plan view. So there's my plan, um, plan elevation and end view all set up like so. So now what we need to do is we need to bring them all together to give us our three-dimensional view. And it's done quite simply by just taking our lines like so and going back in line with the lines that we went along here. So in our case here, 30 degrees or in line with our corner of our room like so. So we're taking each of these heights and by taking them back, the distances are all scaled automatically. We're also going to take the front of our object like so, for each of our steps, and that's going to give us the steps of our object. So, but just join them up. There's the front corner there, well, there's the front corner there, giving us the front edge, like so. There's the back of this first step, well, there's where the back of the first step is. Join them up, one by one by one, and it gives you our surface, like so. So, same thing applies here, coming up like so, giving us our front surface, like so. And we can do the same then for the back surface here, giving us the 
completed object. So it's exactly the same thing here. Um, oh, same as well. If we wanted to go from the side view, we can see it lines up. Again, we don't need the side view in this case, but just to show you that it actually does line up anyway. So over here in our two-dimensional view, we do exactly the same thing. And again, we can see it would be the same with whichever view we took. And that is our three-dimensional view. So this is how we construct an isometric view or a projection of an object like so, fully scaled to be the right dimension that we would see if we're looking at our object. So our next video is going to look at how we can alternate or change the different viewing directions of our object um, using what's known as trimetric and um, diametric projection. So, but they're all variants of exactly the same thing. In fact, once you have a good idea of how to set this guy up here, um, you're pretty much sorted for those as well. So that's pretty much it. So um, hopefully this has been useful to you. So um, thank you very much and stay tuned for more videos.